few days after implantation, the newly formed conceptus is formed of a single cavity called the chorionic sac. The fetal pole is surrounded by two cavities, yolk sac and amniotic sac. and they are attached to one side of the chorionic sac through the connecting stock. During early pregnancy ultrasound, look for chorionic sac, yolk sac, fetal pole, and you may visualize the amniotic sac. Once the fetal pole is visualized, look for fetal heartbeats. Determine gestational age. Identify the number of fetuses and finally examine the uterus and the adenix. Regarding the uterus, the inner surface of the myometrium is lined by a thin layer of endometrium known as basal endometrium. This layer is permanent and it does not shed during menstruation. When the endometrium grow, it will form another layer known as functional endometrium. When layers of the functional endometrium meet together in the midline, they form an ecogenic line representing the uterine cavity. This picture is known as treble line endometrium, seen around the time of ovulation. Implantation will happen to one side of the endometrium. Many changes will happen in the endometrium and its name will change into decidua. A choreodecidua reaction will surround the gestational sac. This is the first sonographic feature of early pregnancy and is known as intradecidual sign. It appears about five week gestation by transvaginal ultrasound. It looks as a small black cyst, eccentric in location, surrounded by an ecogenic white rim. Now I will make the layers of decidua in different colors for better visualization. The gestational sac will grow, and as it grow, it will distort the uterine cavity. Consequently, the gestational sac will appear surrounded by two layers of decidua. The inner one is formed by decidua capsularis, and the outer one is formed by decidua parietalis. This is known as double decidual sign. Intradecidual and double decidual signs are important in differentiation between true gestational sac and pseudo gestational sac. Sodo sac is a fluid collection inside the uterine cavity. It looks an irregular sac, central in location, because it is present inside the uterine cavity and is surrounded by a single layer of decidua. I mean, there is no double decidual sign. Normal gestational sac is rounded or oval in shape, but irregular sac is a suspicious feature and is associated with increased risk of pregnancy loss and require more frequent observations. Also, normal gestational sac is fundal in location or present in the mid-uterine segment. Gestational sac in the lower uterine segment is a poor prognostic feature. The gestational sac will grow. However, if the mean sac diameter becomes 25 mm or more, with no fetal pole or yolk sac, this is called empty sac, or known as an embryonic pregnancy. NICE guideline advises that if mean sac diameter is 25 mm or more, with no fetal pole during a transvaginal ultrasound, then ask for a second opinion and or repeat a scan after 7 days. And if you are using transabdominal ultrasound, 
Repeat the scan after 14 days. To summarize, the normal features of gestational sac are intradecidual and double decidual signs. Differential diagnosis is pseudo sac. Irregular sac and gestational sac present in the lower uterine segment are suspicious features which require more frequent observations. While the presence of main sac diameter of 25 mm or more with no yolk sac or fetal pole is known as an embryonic pregnancy. About 5.5 weeks, a yolk sac will appear inside the gestational sac, eccentric in location. It looks like a small rounded cyst, surrounded by an ecogenic outer layer. The maximum diameter of yolk sac is 6 mm. The function of the yolk sac is to provide nutrition to the developing embryo until the placenta develops and it takes this function. About 6 week gestation, fetal pole will be visualized on the wall of the yolk sac. The yolk sac and the attached fetal pole looks like a diamond ring and that's why it's known as diamond ring sign. Once fetal pole is visualized, look for fetal heartbeats. MM mode can be used to measure fetal heart rate. Some poor prognostic features are related to yolk sac and fetal pole. These include large yolk sac. The maximum diameter of yolk sac is less than 6 mm. And a large yolk sac greater than 7 mm is a poor prognostic feature. Calcified yolk sac is another poor prognostic feature. Another feature is first trimester fetal bradycardia, which means a fetal heart rate less than 85 beats per minute. In addition, first trimester oligohydramnios is another poor prognostic feature. It means a small gestational sac relative to the size of the embryo and is diagnosed when the difference between mean sac diameter and the crown rump length is less than 5 mm. Abnormal feature is fetal demise. When fetal pole is more than 7 mm with no fetal heart beats, this is known as fetal demise. Nice guideline recommend to ask for another opinion and or repeat a scan after 7 days if the fetal pole more than 7 mm with no fetal heart beats during vaginal ultrasound or after 14 days if transabdominal ultrasound is used.